Right. So Sven, you you are a fascinating character, and I think it's true to say that uh, I've never met anyone quite like you. But uh, for the people that don't know you, can you give us a little bit of, of your story and how you got to where you are today? Um. Yes, uh, Mark. So yeah, I'm I'm. Um... Born in Denmark, so my cosmic uh, Big Bang happened approximately nine months <laughs> earlier to the summer of love in '69. I suppose there was a few summers of love, but so I came out as the moon landing and David Bowie ground control to Major Tom kind of thing. I was quite obsessed with David Bowie as I was young and kind of really like that neurodiverse kind of fascination with with this kind of character that is the alien that is looking in. I always kind of felt a bit like that. I was always ob watching, observing, and I was wondering why are people doing what they're doing? And, you know, I didn't do extremely well in education. <clears throat> they were looking for the value of X. I was more interested in the Y. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> As I was 26 years of age, I went to India and then I I went on a spiritual path. And uh, in that role that I had, the good thing that I got, I, I'm a kind of a bridge of worlds. I can be in quite esoterics and quite spiritual worlds. And then I can translate that into people who are more like based in what we would call with those terms like materialistic or basically just normal people you know kind of so i can kind of so i bridge i bridge the gap i bridge the world basically simply by making relationship i'm very it's one of the things i learned from living in india i lived in india i lived in the united kingdom i lived in america as well um, on the west coast um, people want to learn who you are and know who you are before they want to do business with you. They want to know that you're kind of safe or even like anything you do, you know, you've got to create a rapport and relationship. Then I went on, I studied various things, business management and film and visual culture. And then I wanted to reinvent my life with this kind of acting career. So I call it acting as an actor. Really what I did was a lot of inner child healing and in teenager healing and uh, I've known about EFT and matrix re-imprinting which is our connection since about 2012 I trained with Carl from 2015 and I've repeated his courses five times because as Anthony Robbins says those who become masters are those who are willing to practice fundamentals over and over and over. Um, I personally haven't actually had the confidence of stepping into being a facilitator, but I'm really happy like working with you because I'm, I'm fascinated about like, so I've uh, had this career as an actor and I, like from an inner child perspective, I've had some riveting successes. I've done some really interesting, fascinating things like, and uh, then I was kind of doing that supportive artist to, that was the bread and butter, bread and butter kind of money, you know, to do the more low budget, interesting things. I, but I've been in a lot of films, like I was in Disney, Aladdin, I met Will Smith there and kind of, uh, I had a lot of fun, like for me, study equates having fun. Then I thought, what can I do within the film industry that brings more value? So I thought I'll train as a massage therapist and then I'll offer that as a kind of, for film productions, you know, to be offset and help everybody to, then I'm thinking like my neurodiverse way of thinking, how can I really provide value? What if I take my, all the healing network that I know, I use these transferable skills of bridging these worlds. So I have this healing network, therapeutic network. What if I connect those with the film and television people? That would really bring value to the world, I thought. <laughs> so uh, 
I kind of had some with your kind of, um, yeah, I had some progress very quickly when I trained as a massage therapist, very quickly I had like, uh, due to the influence of my network here in West Wales, I had my first like 12 clients just by word and mouth really. And then I did photo shoots, etc., showing authentically what I was doing, specifically kind of aiming at, you know, that very kind of aesthetically kind of audience within the film and television industry that would look for those kind of things. Um, you know, marketing, positioning myself in the marketplace. So the visually, cut. so there's a, you know, I've got the transferable skills of the trickster kind of, <laughs> I make it up as I go along. I'm very honest about it. Everybody knows, I think, but there is a, a, a some sort of showmanship in it. most things I do. There's a, you know, so the comedian sometimes, you know, I have to, I usually pre-frame my conversation is like I have worked within that area of comedy and kind of I make things up and we might just have to go cut and edit this out and so I'm kind of like how do I do this how can I be the com comedian in one day and then be this very serious ther therapist another time and one of my friends he just say said to me one day he said Sven why don't you just be yourself <laughs> It doesn't have to be this <laughs> black and white thing, does it? You know, and and I think one of the things that does come across to you is 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 yes, to to be yourself. You you you're quite happy to show that vulnerability and and to share your humour, and I think that gets across really well with with, with people. So taking this 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 forward, I, I know you've got a huge amount of knowledge and. A, and a huge amount of experience, and, and you're really looking now to take this this further. So, what 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 it, what it, what would be your 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 ultimate vision? What would be your your ideal life? Helping people, what would that involve? So, the the vision for the world is kind of I've watched a film in 2000. It came out 11, 11, 11. Uh, Thrive. What on earth will it take? And uh, I watched it in 2012. It talks about some of the problems of the world that those who control the money, they control the media. I think we probably see it right now. They also control the f pharmaceutical industry. It, it's just a little pinprick. <laughs> they, control, they control the inner energy industry, they control uh, the food industry, and they control the educational system. So pretty much everything in the world is kind of this, you know, it's been, we've, we've got a certain worldview. So that is, in my opinion, a very disconnected worldview. You know, so the transition we are in now is to, how do we move from this disconnected worldview to or like, this is also something that's influenced by Newtonian science, where they would, like think of the universe and everything is like very, very mechanical. So where the science is now with like Nishing Haramine and these kind of people who are really at the forefront is that actually everything is conscious, you know, and the universe is conscious. And so for me, it's like what you've been doing in your life, you, you have realized that like, for instance, we, we were very much around finances and money like there was one in my school of uh, kind of learning by doing what you traditionally call making mistakes and something like there was one trainer uh, in some network marketing I did very briefly just for learning something and finding out that wasn't for me but he said money isn't everything until you haven't got enough then it becomes everything but so it's about balance you know we we do need money some of us maybe want more money so we can do more good with it uh, you know but we need money we also need fulfillment we also need purpose so for me i think my purpose would be my ideal life would be to kind of like 
for instance, confidence is a learnable skill. That's what Brian Tracy, for instance, would say. Confidence is a learnable skill. If you don't have a go at doing anything, you will never learn anything. So if you believe this idea that the textbook answer is the right answer, you basically stop yourself so much from experiencing life because life doesn't work like that. For instance, Robert Kiyosaki, who is one of these people who influences me with his way of thinking, he says, life will give you the exam, boom, and then you'll have to figure out what the lesson was. Like in one sense, you can say the situation in the world right now is like, life is giving us all this, you know, COVID coming, bang. What do we do now? What's the lesson? You know, you can't look in the textbook and go, oh, it's on page 90, 99, <laughs> how to, you know, kind of need to, you know. So I think Edward de Bono is like creative, like thinking is a creative skill, which haven't really been, it's a problem solving skill that hasn't really been taught in school either. So we need to use, so for me, it's about unifying my mind, like the mind and the heart and, you know, aligning and aligning with purpose. I think Bob Dylan, he says, you've got to serve somebody and service is the safest place to be. When you're in service, because then you're connecting, then you are, you are aligning with purpose. You're aligning like, and this is where like people who have a, like a mission, you know, who have core values, who have, it's almost like the universe conspire for them to have everything that they need and want to bring this compelling vision. So what I kind of in the process, I want to create this compelling vision this is a world we can create where actually everybody can thrive because I'm just looking at the world and I'm just looking with my intuitive kind of knowledge and innocence. I mean, this world holds an abundance of resources. There's enough for every child, every woman, every man to have enough, isn't there? I mean, Gandhi would say uh, there's enough for everybody's need, but there isn't enough for everybody's greed. Mm -hmm. And I think there's that kin when you realize that actually, you know, when I have my basic needs met, like there's a film called I Am that I, uh, that I thought was quite inspirational. It said like, if you're outside, now I'm in West Wales, it's raining. If I'm outside in the rain, it's raining really bad and I get really wet and somebody invites me, come in, sit, sit down in front of the fire. That's a big step of transformation and happiness. But like he, this man who made this film, he's saying like, I had $1 million. I thought when I had $2 million, I'd be twice as happy, but I wasn't. And then he said, when I bought this enormous mansion and I stood at the balcony and I was overlooking this enormous mansion, I realized I was one bit happier than when I made my first film and I lived in a little trailer, whatever it was. Happiness is a state of mind. You can have, like I saw the podcast with Brett Moran or listened to it. And he's saying, you know, people can be doing life sentences in their head, <laughs> you know, or people can have seemingly everything, money, success, and be unhappy you know so how do we balance how do we have enough like it comes from being so if i feel enough i do enough and i have enough you know it's that kind of transformational thing so i think for me it's creating that compelling vision so for me it starts with what i would like to focus on for myself is that i've i've trained in eft and matrix reimprinting i see so many people who are probably not you know, they're just doing it. You know, I focused more on my acting career and my, uh, I trained as a massage therapist and I felt more comfortable with that. I wanted to incorporate EFT and matrix reimprinting, but now, you know, this situation has given me this chance that it's winter. I'd like to focus on EFT sessions and matrix reimprinting to transform my own beliefs, etc. And then I'd like to offer that. And then I'm thinking, because I've got connections within the film and television industry, except, but what I really like to work around, I'd like to work about confidence. 
I don't like to, I, I created this thing touch confidence and money so it's kind of like so touch is one thing confidence is a learnable skill but then I also think body and self-image you know so many people especially women and younger women they're tormented by this fake world that's been created where you know they see all these photoshopped images of women that looks nothing like a woman would actually look in real life and that is actually quite toxic and it's like the bombardment of that virtual world so i would like to assist men and women but to basically to feel more comfortable being in their own body embodying who they are being themselves and feeling happy about that and you know it really doesn't matter what you look like it is a question about what you feel like yes. you know so there's kind of like that kind of you know you can work both ways you work from inside out you know you can if you change your environment you'll feel better like you had to change the setting you you weren't happy in one thing and you went to another way and did something else and that suited you better so it's kind of like but that comes also from the internal shift. Once you begin to, you know, our lives is shaped by the questions we ask ourselves. So we have this question, why is this always happening to me? Then the universe will give you that answer. If you ask the universe, how can I be happy and fulfilled? Then the universe will give you other answers, isn't it? You know, or, you know, if you're not happy with the situation, do what you can to change it. And if you can't do that, like what Wayne Dyer says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So there really has to be an internal shift and an external shift. So for me, it's it's the same journey that I think we're on universally really is from fear and ego and scarcity into love, abundance and and service and purpose, I think. <sighs> And how wonderful when you when you when you create that community where people are, you know, are able to show their vulnerability and and move from scarcity to abundance in you know have this inner happiness, which is what it's all about. So uh, I commend you for your vision. I think that 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 that's wonderful. And to anybody watching this, come on board because I know just talking to to Sven over the last sort of three four weeks he's got so much wisdom to share with you that uh you know you could really do yourself a a, a big favor so thank you for today and let's look and move 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 forward with that right so just excellent